Hey, everybody, this is going to be a fun episode. I got to uh, have an incredible, deep, very rich conversation with uh, Andrew Perquet. And he is um, the president of the Inherit Foundation. Uh, he also runs The Huddle, which is a men's group for mental health um, for men, which is such an incredible topic that I think needs to become way more um commonplace right and, and discussed on a regular basis and uh he is a real estate agent he is um an investor he's a high school football coach the guy's got his hands in so many things but we had a really great conversation and i can't wait to dive in because um there's some incredible tips um some life lessons and all sorts of things that are loaded into this uh this time with with andrew so let's jump in i'm excited to chat with him and i'll see you guys in there welcome to the muscular gentleman. Muscular gentleman. Where we don't apologize for being men. Masculinity, sex, fitness, and attraction. Helping men reclaim their masculine edge, improve their sex life, get the body they've always wanted, and master their mindset to build a life worth living. This is the muscular gentleman. And now your host. Rustin Webb. I am extremely excited to introduce uh, this guest. He has uh, recently joined the Muscular Gentleman um, and also has a really cool uh, story to tell as far as uh, something he does for a nonprofit um, and excited to talk about uh, men's mental health uh, more than anything. So um, without further ado, this is Andrew. Andrew, um, I, wanna, I don't want to botch your last name. How do you say your last name? Perquette. Perquette. Okay. So there's Perquette. a yeah. Perquette. Like it's almost like two syllable. Yeah. It's, it's pronounced like it should have an E at the end. Uh, like after the two T's. Yeah. Cause most people say Perquette. Perquette. But it's Perquette. Yeah. Yeah. I like Perquette better. That's, that sounds. I do too. <laughs> I do too, man. I'm, I'm with you. Well, so if you don't mind, um, tell the audience, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Um, and then what you do, this nonprofit, I'm, I'm so interested in to learning more about. And then what what's like started that, right? Like what got you to start uh, this nonprofit? Yeah. Well, first off, I appreciate you having me on this. It means a lot, man. I uh, highly respect you. And, and I consider doing it shirtless because I've seen you shirtless so much <laughs> since joining the Muscular Gentleman. But it was tempting. But maybe it, maybe in 90 days I'll do that. Oh, that's so. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so we, you know, you kind of mentioned it, but we run a nonprofit um, that's geared towards men's mental health. And so um, I like to, before really diving deep into it, just giving people the why behind it. And uh, actually, this book right here, if you haven't read it, uh, The Boy Crisis by Warren Farrell. Um, is where we got a lot of our information, a lot of our stats. Uh, but it's really interesting because men are four times more likely to die by suicide than females. Mm. Um, and actually, from 20 to 24, he says, it's actually six times, um, a male is six times more likely to die by suicide than a female. And goes down to four and then actually back up at once, once retirement hits. Okay. And so those are just some crazy high numbers. And then where I live, I live in Colorado Springs. In our county, males make up 80% of the suicides here. Mm -hmm. um, and then of men who experience depression, this is nationwide, only 5% seek any outpatient resources. Okay, so that those were just like baffling stats to us. We're like, are, are resources not available to men? Or are they just not you know, approaching those resources. You know, what we found is that resources are available, but guys aren't really taking use of them, right? And so we just asked why, and this is more opinion-based than it is statistics, but we narrowed it down to two things, aesthetic and cost. One, mental health resources typically are not very appealing. They feel very pharmaceutical and very clinical. And I like to always say, too, that doesn't mean they're not effective, but they're not necessarily appealing, right? Like almost like a... a, a a pamphlet, right? Which is right. Like, yeah. like a stand, like I'm, am I getting instructions for, you know, a, a pharmaceutical drug or am I getting help for my mental health? Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's like, however you think a hospital would look or smell, that's what that pamphlet is. Right. It's like, 
that pamphlet and you're just like, ah, you know, I'm not going to do this, right? And then you look at the price tag and you're like, well, now I'm definitely not doing this, right? So those were the two things we wanted to address was that aesthetic and that cost. Mm -hmm. And so our goal was to create something that one was attractive to men that they wanted to be in, wanted to be a part of, and two, that was affordable, if not free, um, free of cost for them to get the help that they need and that they deserve, right? So um, so that's what we've done. Um, and then I'll, I'll come back to the specifics in a sec and share a little bit more of our story. Yeah. Um, so a good friend of mine, Taylor Draper, actually started a clothing company called Inherent Clothier. Uh, back in 2020, he started it because he was going through some pretty severe depression and started going to counseling. And he actually, he said one time, uh, he was like, man, every time I wear this suit in a meeting, I feel really confident. This is like my confident meeting suit. Uh-huh. He's like, what if I wear it to counseling? And he did, and he felt more confident at counseling. And he felt, he, he was able to go deeper and he was able to talk about deeper and real stuff. And so... Him and I did some research together, and it was actually a term that was coined by um, Northwestern University called enclosed cognition. And essentially, it's a fancy way to say look good, feel good. But what they found was that your clothes represent something, and when you wear them, you embody what they represent. Okay, so it actually has a scientific, it has an impact yeah. on your brain, on your mind, the way what you wear. Um, and so he was like, man. But just for the listeners, that uh, that is such a good point. Uh, this doesn't just have to do with mental health, but those studies too, I think, are, are proving. Uh, you know, look, you don't have to be, you don't have to have any mental health issues to to use this this right. type of, of theory or this research. Uh, there's also research go- uh, that's come out, uh, same idea, but they did research with people wearing cologne. They had men going around um, being videotaped. And these, um, these women were actually supposed to, in the study, point out which men were the most confident. And 90% of the men that they pointed to were wearing cologne, and uh, the rest were not. And so just smelling good actually shows uh, a, a certain level of confidence through even just video footage. So that's yeah. pretty interesting uh, research, you know, along to, to go along with uh, the suit. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's it's... It's wild what happens when you, and this goes along with what you're doing with the muscular gentleman, right? Right. When you take care of yourself from the inside all the way out, I mean, it shows. People can tell, and most importantly, you feel it, and you can tell, right? Like, it's it's so important. I mean, we, we even, uh, I mean, this is a great thing to talk about with, with how you talk about masculinity is, we have a barber shop in the back of our shop right now, but we'd love to get a Manny Petty back there for men as well. Yeah. And like that's one thing I was like super opposed to until I got married. <laughs> and then my wife was like, do this for me because you love me and like all this stuff, right? I was like, fine, I'll go get a pedicure. And now I'm like, I'm like, honey, when are we getting our next pedicure? Right. <laughs> like, Where are we going? That's yeah, I'm like, come on, like I'm, I'm ready to go. I love pedicures, right? <laughs> and so, uh, Anyway, that's just a total side note, but um, but yeah. So we did all this research. So we started the clothier just to raise awareness for men's mental health, um, use the concept of enclosed cognition, and then it just took off, man. I mean, people loved it. It got recognition from all over. Um, the costume designer for Mad Men, um, she heard about it, and so she designed a line with Taylor um, that's in our shop now. Um, she was a costume designer. She's Emmy, Emmy Award winning for um, Mad Men. She did the It costume. Um, and then uh, a couple of, she did that recent, the 1983, is it? The prequel to Yellowstone. Okay. She did all the costume design for that. So anyway, she caught wind of it, loved it, worked with us. It was awesome. So Taylor approached me. I've been in nonprofit my whole career. And he was like, hey, man, like, let's start a nonprofit. You know, let's... let's do something so we have boots on the ground actually helping guys so long story short i came on switched careers in 2020 which i heard was ideal and you know we made it happen man um so what we do is we do monthly events called huddles and it's just a place for dudes to talk to other men it's a place where they have permission to be honest we have one rule 
one overarching rule for the night. And it's when someone asks, how are you? You have to be honest. If you're good, share why you're good. If you're not doing well, then you don't have to share your deepest, darkest, but just start by saying I'm not okay, right? Um, and so that's just been incredible to see men opening up, see guys starting to become vulnerable. Um, we do quarterly events, a little more dialed in, more topic driven. Um, you're actually going to be speaking at one of those. Um, and so we bring in a professional to, to talk about a uh, more, more dialed in topic. Um, and we just recently launched our grant program uh, where we actually help men to pay for resources. So that really approaches that cost factor. Mm -hmm. So dudes love our huddles, man, because it's you can bring your own cigar, you can get cleaned up from our barber, you get there's refreshments there. Guys love them. It's basically we're just playing guys night once a month. Okay, guys night where you have to drop the BS, right? Um, that's well, that's all. It is. So is this nonprofit? Um, I want to I want to just readdress these names real quick. So what's yeah. the name of the suit company? So um, we're all under the umbrella of Inherent. Inherent. So we just refer to ourselves as Inherent. Okay. There you um, go. Inherent Clothier is our clothing, and then in Inherent Foundation is our nonprofit. Okay, but um, then call them the Huddles is basically the, uh, the name you use for for the meeting. Correct. Okay. Yep. Got it. Perfect. Yep. That's just the monthly meeting that happens. We just and, call it. Up. And you kind of touched on this, but kind of give I guess the listener uh, or somebody watching like what what exactly. Um, how would I, and I understand this is local, but you have, I believe, some in, in Denver too, uh, Colorado? Not yet. Uh, we kind of we tested a couple in market, uh, in the Denver market, but we don't have any currently going in Denver. Not yet. We'll help. We'll right. Help. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I was kind of counting on that. So. <laughs> so what, tell me a little bit, like, how would, uh, how would I even stumble upon a huddle or, or this entire uh, even even the the inherent clothing like how where is this and what does it look like from a customer standpoint? Yeah, definitely. So most of our marketing is um, right now in the springs. It's word of mouth type marketing because it's it's smaller out of springs, right? Like kind of everybody knows everybody some way or another. Okay, um, so we really get our guys to adopt more of an ambassador mindset where it's like you're improving your mental wellness and you want this for your friends and the people around you. So go find them and bring them in. So, um, so we want to count on our guys to kind of go out and invite people like really an invite based because we want it to be really organic, but we actually have a lot of people who are just walking the streets of downtown Colorado Springs. They see our shop. They're like, man, that looks cool. They come in and every single person who steps foot in our store hears about the nonprofit. So it's one and the same. You, you get both of them. Okay. So that's where a lot of people hear about it is either through invites or just do by walking through the store. Some, some people online, but we, we love that that's the case because it's just so much more organic. You know, um, we've had a couple really cool opportunities. We were at New York, LA and Denver fashion weeks this year. Um, and then we're actually, we showed in Denver and then we're showing the line in New York Fashion Week in the fall as well. So some of that stuff naturally gives us, you know, uh, a little bit of a platform for people to see us. But a lot of our, um, for, for people to find out initially about us is, is pretty organic, um, which, which we love. You know, I think that really fits what we're trying to do pretty well. Yeah, definitely. And, and, and so, um, so basically if I find, so everybody that walks through the store, um, obviously the mo for the most part, they're looking for a suit or they just want to see, you know, what, what you're all about. And then if I was buying a suit or if I'm just stopping in, you guys would explain a little bit about the huddle. And is that what you'd use for the word? Like you just say, have you heard about the huddle or do you, you talk about inherent foundation? No. Well, so, um, we talk about, we're a clothier. So whenever people are looking at the clothes, we're a clothier with a mission. Okay. okay. Our mission is acted out through our nonprofit. Um, so, I love yeah. That. So we tell them about the huddle. Have you heard about the huddle? Come to a huddle. Be in a huddle. Um, and then, you know, that's the huddle is really that first step because you, before you have 
a sense of uh, being able to even help somebody, you have to have a level of trust first, right? And the huddle is our way of really building trust, like giving guys a place that's safe. There's no expectation on them. It's like just say I'm good or I'm not, right? And even if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. Like it just is really that first step to building trust um, for us to then at some point be able to press a little deeper and say, can we get you connected with a therapist and then we'll pay for the first four sessions of this, right? Um, which is kind of where that grant program comes in. And so, um, so yeah, everybody that comes in hears about it because everything we do is, is geared towards the mission. It's the whole point of the code here is the mission, right? Yep. Um, so that. yeah, so yeah, so all the guys in our, in our store are trained to have that conversation um, and to just bring it up every single time someone's in there. Now, okay, so you now you kind of started to touch on this, and I can't remember what number you said. Did you say the ages between 20 and 26 or something like that, where the numbers start to rise um, in suicide rate for men? 20 to 26 is, or 20 to 24 is six times six, higher. Mm-hmm. Okay. So would you say that, the, the and this is just for the audience listening, you know, uh, like the number of people that come to your, that, that you guys end up helping, is it more suicide or is it just, because mental health seems to be becoming a broader, uh, you know, um, spectrum as far as what we're finding with, with mental health or just for men in general, right? Um, what, what do you find? I guess from uh, like one-on-one action and, and talking to these men, what are you finding the most common things? Is it suicide or is it, is it kind of a, a mix of stuff? Yeah, not at all. Actually um, um, suicide is we've, we've actually um, because of the trainings our guys have been through our staff, um, a couple of guys have been saved from suicide just by being asked the right questions. Mm. But that's, that's every so often. I mean, um, you know, the, the big thing that we, we communicate and actually when we talk about huddles, like we don't ever really say that this is a mental health event. We say, this is a guy's night. We just want you to come. We want them to come in just being, they're already going to be intimidated, right? Sure. We're going to sit in a circle, sing Kumbaya or something, right? Right. And so we're really intentional to just say like, this is for everybody because it's not a matter of, if you're going to struggle with stress or anxiety or a level of depression, depression doesn't always mean suicidal. Um, but it's not a matter of if you're going to struggle with some of those things, it's just a matter of when, right? So our whole message is even if you're doing great right now, come by and be here and just have this community of people with you. Cause one, there could be another guy who really needs an ear and you're in a good place and you're in a good place to be able to listen to him and, make him feel seen and heard. But also when the time comes that you need somebody, you know where to find them and they're right here. Right. So most of it is the the cool thing I'd say is guys actually opening up for the first time in their life, not suicide, not anything, just finally voicing things. I had a guy who told me verbatim, he was given, uh, we had a networking group together and he was like, guys, you have to go to this. He's like, because I talked about shit that I swore I'd never talk about in my life. You know? That's so great. You know, this is so cool because the muscular gentlemen, you know, uh, even this podcast, we're trying to level up as men. We're trying to find every area of our, our life that we can make better. And that's the point of the journey, right? It's, it, this isn't, there's no end in sight here. And, um, I, you know, I, te- I teach and preach this all the time, but like men need other men. It is so important. And no matter how you want to swing it or for the reasons, but, but having each other to sharpen our, our skills, whether it's just being out there and, and having conversations, whether it's improving our mental health, whether it's physical, you know, uh, training, but that's why the muscular gentleman has a community aspect as well, because these talks that we have in our uh, weekly discussions on masculinity, like hearing other guys' stories or struggles or whatever they might be, that's massive. I mean, I would say, you know, if you're listening, isolating yourself is probably one of the emasculating ways you can start to live your life. Uh, as soon as you kind of dip your toe into any type of group where it's more men, um, you're going to level up. Like you're just, it's like, you know, my grandpa used to say, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. 
and it, it never really dawned on me in high school, you know, it was like, whatever, you know, grandpa, but, but, you know, as an older gentleman, I can look back and go, oh my gosh, she had so much to say through that one little saying. And it's, it's huge, but that's awesome that you don't really, you're not saying, Hey, look, anybody with mental health, come over here. It's just, Hey, look, everybody, let's be men and hang out. And like, what, what kind of, so tell me a little bit about what a huddle would look like. I mean, you said that, uh, there's a barber and things like that, but I mean, do you guys have, um, talks and things like that? I know you said you, we, we were, we're talking about me doing a talk, but like, what does that look like? Yeah. So, um, we have guys, so it's technically seven to nine, usually goes till about 10 or 11 when we don't kick guys out at nine o'clock. Um, but yeah, so guys show up at around seven, seven thirty, and then about seven thirty, I just kind of welcome everybody. Um, I tell everybody what the purpose of the night is. Um, I'm a huge culture guy, so I'm gonna I'm gonna reiterate the culture and the expectations every single time. I mean, I want people to be able to just like be saying it in their sleep, right? <laughs> because it is that important to me when, especially in a a place like this, right? So uh, we do that, and there's, there's really, like, two main formats we use. Sometimes we literally just hang out. Like, we, we'll, we'll give some topics to talk about. we we'll say, go talk, and it's just a night to hang out. And then most of the time, we do break into, like, some groups. Um, but, again, it's not like we're clear that not everybody has to share. We give a, a specific topic. So um, the last group we did, excuse me, last group we did, um, it was where do you struggle with confidence? Really broad, really, but it gives the, all, all the guys freedom to kind of dive in and be like, here's an area that I really struggle with confidence. And a lot of like what you're saying too about having a community of men is like there's something so freeing when you find out that you're not alone, mm -hmm. Right. When you hear a guy say something that you've been like struggling with and you're like, I'm not the only one, right? That starts to pull you out of that isolation totally. that you're talking about. Um, and two, and two, you know, it's almost even, <laughs> it sounds bad, but you know, it's like we, we, you know, it's like, it's like dogs, right? They suffer in silence. Men are very similar, right? We, we don't voice it like a, a female does. It's not quite that feminine energy where we're willing to become more emotional, drop our feelings out and just pour. Men are, we're a little bit more closed, right? Off. Um, and definitely hurts our confidence. Confidence is actually a masculine trait. And uh, it's a, I love that you brought that up because it's one of those masculine traits that requires, you know, stepping out of your comfort zone because that's where I think society has headed so far in the wrong direction. It's how comfortable can I get and how much pleasure can I seek? And that just seems to be this ongoing theme that's becoming more and more of an issue. But for this kind of uh, group of men and, and things like that, you build confidence by being with other men. Like you become more confident. And like you said, as soon as I find out there's like five other guys with the same issue, well, now I don't feel so, you know, I'm not beating myself up. So, and we do that as men, we beat ourselves up, I think um, pretty quickly. Um, what, what have you guys, what have you guys seen with, I mean, confidence is a great question. What have you guys seen as far as those kind of uh, responses once you have those conversations going? Yeah, so uh, it's just cool to see guys, I mean, the, the instant bond that's created after some of those conversations is just awesome, man. You have guys follow up afterwards who either, it's like one of two things, right? Either I relate to what you're saying or I can help you. And we also have a, we also have a rule that says don't give advice unless you're asked for advice, okay? Because that's another thing we like to do as men, right? It's like, hey, you're struggling with that? Just do this. It's like, oh, cool. Thanks, man. Like, sometimes I just need an ear, right? I just need someone to listen to me. But at the same time, these guys go into conversation and it's, there's a difference between like, I think I can help and be there for you. And like, oh, here's what you should go do. You know, be better. Go have fun, right? Which so there's just that level of support. Like, here's, here's a, a tool and then go isolate right. yourself again. Right, yeah. right. I, I, I mean, let me, let me walk this journey with you. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. I had a, um, as, as an entrepreneur, you know, you get, you get a lot of, uh, advice on your businesses and, and, you know, people want to throw out how to do something. And my, my biggest thing, I learned this uh, about a year ago 
it, it was at a conference. I had a, we had a speaker that was talking and he was explaining this, this exact situation. I think a lot of entrepreneurs get, which was advice from somebody else. And he stopped the guy and he said, listen, if I listen to your advice, am I going to end up where you are right now? And the guy's like, well, uh, that's not what I meant. You know, kind of pulled himself back because he wasn't in the situation where uh, everybody would want to be. And so he said, I, you know, and unless you've been where I'm trying to go, I don't want, you know, I don't want your advice. So I appreciate it. But he said it in a nice way. It was, it was still a gentlemanly way to address it, but it was a very interesting question because I think that as men, we're fixers, right? So we want to throw out, we're not as good at listening, right? Um, And we want to throw out this advice, but it's so true. Unless that person's already there, like, why are you giving advice? You know, so I, I've actually learned to step back a little bit before I give advice to people and say, all right, am I where they're wanting to be? Because if I'm not, like, I don't know why I should be spitting. Right. <laughs> no, definitely, definitely. And it's just so, we're just so quick to do it. I mean, uh-huh. even in, this is something my wife and I do. And um, because I would be so quick to give advice and to be, she'd come home frustrated from work. And I'd be like, well, here's what you need to do. You need to freaking email this person. You go talk to this person. You need to bust down their door, right? Like, all, <laughs> had it all figured out. And she was like, I just need you to listen to me. Right. I don't want your advice, right? And I, I don't know if she read it somewhere, but she was like, we, we, we made an agreement that any time we came to each other with a frustration, that we asked the other, do you need comfort or do you want solutions? Yeah, that's yeah. Cool. we we ask that, and so it's like, well, I just need comfort right now. It's like, all right, lay it on me. I'm gonna get the popcorn. <laughs> or we're gonna talk crap. Like, let's do it. You know, <laughs> like whatever it is. The ear is <laughs> open. Just dump. Like, get it out. Yeah, totally. And then I'll be like, hey, what are your thoughts on this? Can you help me think through this problem and help me reach a solution? Right. We just communicate that up front because it just helps us so much. So we try and get our guys to do the same thing. Like preface your question with it like hey man i need advice or hey man I'm not looking for advice i just need to hear real quick are you willing to do that All right um there's also a, a level of responsibility and if you are going to share at least preface what you want to get out of it right <laughs> don't leave it open-ended because then you can't also can't blame them for it right no, I love uh, that. yeah cool. yeah um and i think it's interesting i wanted to touch on this real quick i was looking this up on my phone but something that we like to highlight too as we're talking about mental health is like, it has such a negative connotation to it. Mm-hmm. Like you think mental health, people instantly go to like mental illness, which is two very different things, right? Health. If you just took out the mental part of it, you said health and illness, it, it's going to be, you're going to think of something completely different. Right. right. And we're, we're just saying like, when you're saying mental health, it should be positive. It should be a good thing because actually, um, the World Mental Health Organization, this is how they define mental health. They define it as a state of well-being in which the individual realizes their own abilities, can cope with the normal stresses of life, and can work productively and is able to contribute to their community. That's the definition of mental health, right? And so we really try and make it more of a positive thing. Like, hey, let me tell you about my mental health, right? Like, we're posting about like our, our fitness, right? And how much weight I'm losing or like whatever it is. And it's not like, guess how positive my mental health is right now, right? So we're actually doing an event specifically. So in July, it's just a celebration of mental wellness and mental health in our community because we believe it should be celebrated. Like when you, I know you do this, when, when you have guys who, I've seen it on the Facebook page, when guys hit a victory you're celebrating right away right 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 for some reason with mental health it's like okay so but what's the next how do you, how can you get better still sure like sure. let's not stop and celebrate the, the the improvement that's been made right so that's just a perspective shift like i always like to offer and just put out on the table for people as well you know because i just i think it's so important to to have that I think yeah. that's such a, a great um, message there because I think just hearing the word mental, <laughs> just mental, right? Like uh, <laughs> you hear like people saying, God, he's going mental, right? So we just the word mental, it becomes this negative connotation. 
which is sad because you're right. Mental health is a positive thing, right? And what's funny is even when we were talking about it at the beginning or even when you told me about the huddle, um, you know, there's this inclination for even me to think, okay, there's, there's some guys struggling, right? When, when that's not necessarily true, we're talking about men who just want to maintain or improve their mental health by just having good relationships, having accountability, um, and improving different areas of their life where they can, that that's, I mean, that's all we're all trying to do, right. On a, on a <laughs> daily basis. So it's cool that you bring it up that way because mental illness or just illness is so drastically different. You're right. Um, and two, at the same time, I mean, I would say that, you know, on a spectrum, what, I mean, every single male that we, that we ever in, interact with, there's, we're all ill, right? We're all dying. We're, you know, we're, we have a number day um, and it's different for everyone, but there's some type of illness that we're, we're going through. It's just what degree or what level of that spectrum is it? And, right. you know, how can we slow it down or change it uh, mm -hmm. as we go through? So, yeah, I find that interesting. It's almost like neither of them are really negative. We just yeah. attach something to it. Right, right. Yeah, the, the, it, that's exactly what it is. It's the things that you attach to it. Right away, you're like, oh, they're depressed because mm -hmm. they're talking about mental health, right? Sure. It's, it's just a shame, man, because that's not, that's, not, that's not the case. And to push men towards this is, and, and I think this fits with what you're doing is, you know, part of my journey into this, like I struggled a lot, really heavily with anxiety. Mm -hmm. And it took a toll on my marriage, man. Like more than anything, it took a toll on my marriage and the people in my life that I cared about. So one thing I, I really communicate to men and try to get this message across to them is like, first step, first part, it has to be for you, okay? But the thing is, when you get better, by default, everybody around you gets better, right? Becomes better. Or or situations around you, I believe, come, become better, right? If you truly are working I, I guess i guess that can't be universally true but if you truly are working towards a better marriage and, and a better relationship you have to get better yourself right and the, as you improve then that relationship's going to improve right so we tell men like get better for yourself because when you're better the people around you will be better and your relationships will be better and then and, and it just is a it's like a domino effect right um because i don't i just don't think men realize like just the impact that they have just the impact that their existence has right um, every um, all the relationships and everybody around them right um i think we undercut ourselves on our value uh as men and 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 i'm not look uh, I, I talk about feminism here and there, and, and I, you know, one thing I've always preached about feminism is it's not our job to try to fight that. It, it's our job to just step it up as men and, uh, and answer that question or whatever it is that they're uh, upset or mad about and answer it by just being better men. But um, it's interesting because I think um, society has created a negative connotation just being a man. Uh, it, it's all, all of a sudden this bad thing. And uh, yeah, you know, I love that you brought up the fact that, you know, you, you've had anxiety and things like that. And um, it, it's true. Like, even if you aren't in a relationship, okay, for those listening that, that aren't, if you want a quality relationship, you better take care of this stuff before you even get into one. Um, and if that, this is your opportunity now to address it. Right. So I think this goes for everyone, right? Like it doesn't matter if you're in a relationship, don't wait, address this stuff. Um, because once you get into the relationship, it just makes it even harder to, to, to process and to work through. But, um, so have you noticed the huddle helping you too, or was this something you addressed before you started the huddle with, with some of your anxiety? Yeah, I, I addressed it personally first. It was something I felt like it, it was it, it was actually right before I started the nonprofit. Um, it was something where I was like, I need to do the work that I'm asking other men to do first, right? And I can't ask these guys to go to counseling and, and I've never gone myself, you know? And so I started counseling for the first time. Um, absolutely incredible, you know, dug up things that I just never would have even thought of or realized. And, uh, and it does still help man. you know, and it's, there, there's the, you know, to be frank and, and even 
transparent on this, there's the temptation of like, well, I'm the leader of this. Like I should be the guy that everyone else goes to and be there for everybody else. And it's like, but that defeats the whole purpose of it. And so it's actually become a safe place for me too to be able to, I have guys coming up and talking to me like, how are you doing, man? Like you set up this event, you're running this thing. Are you doing okay? And I can be real with them and just be like, well, today sucked, and I had to run a huddle on top of it. So <laughs> I hope you're happy, man. Yeah, 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 I, yeah, that's great. I think that's fantastic. You know, it's funny about uh, one of the masculine qualities we talk about is leadership within the muscular gentleman and what it, like, it looks like to be a leader. One, it, it is, it's setting the example, and, and it does force you to kind of step up and play, put yourself on a little higher uh, level to represent and, and be the example, which – it's something I do within the muscular gentleman, but also, you know, I, uh, I'm transparent, meaning, yeah, I might set the example, but I don't do it perfectly. And I need my men to see the imperfect qualities within me. So like, you know, this from my workouts, like I'll be in there struggling. Um, I just filmed some workouts uh, last week and I was dying in my filming, but I let the guys see it. I don't, um, I don't edit out anything because I don't want anybody thinking, you know, that I'm like Superman or a robot. It's like, no, you guys need to know I'm, I'm the same as, as you, you know? Yeah. Um, I think that's, I think that's one of the best ways to lead, right? Is just one set, set the example, but two, just be authentic. Like that's what people want, you know? Right. That's great. I think, I think that's great. And, and, and this is for the listeners too, you know, as a, as a masculine man, this is what we do with our kids too. Like let them enjoy the imperfections of you and let your spouse enjoy the, the, the faulty parts of us. I think as men, we try to become so perfect or appear so perfect that it, it, you lose that like connection uh, yeah. with people and, and they can't find you. Like the, it, it's like they lose, they lose out on, on a joy between the two of you because the mistakes are what's kind of fun, right? That's, that's where life can be more bliss because we can just, like you said, you can show up to these things and just be yourself and it doesn't hinder anything. Right. That, that, that I think has a lot to do with mental health, right? Is, is showing up as our authentic self and our true story, um, which, you know, people, you know, we want to hide sometimes. Yeah. A lot of times, man, it feels like, but yeah, that's so good, man, because I that was a big part of my anxiety was that that pressure I put on myself that was like everyone around me is is I was a pastor actually prior to this. And so there's a lot of leadership there too. Meaning from a stage, I was on a stage in college all the time. I was on an improv comedy team and I like spoke like tons of stuff, man. And then I'm leading in my marriage. And you put these expectations on yourself that, okay, I know everyone around me is expecting me to be perfect. Right. right? And my, my first or second counseling session, he said, um, he asked me a question. He said, you know, I'm curious, um, where's the real Andrew and how is he doing? <laughs> and I was like, uh, I don't know who that is anymore, man. You know, like, just get so lost in it. So yeah, like just to reaffirm what you're saying, like take pleasure and joy in the, in the faults. Like yeah. how freeing is it to not be perfect? Like, I mean, yeah, it sucked that be perfect. It, <laughs> to be perfect man, you know? It's, it's funny. There's the, some of the times in my day with my kids where I'm, they're laughing at me and I'm laughing at myself are my most joyful part of the day because it's, it's like, Oh my gosh, what a relief. I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to, um, you know, show my kids, uh, you know, I can be myself with, around them and, and my wife too. But, but that, that's the same for men being around other men where we can um, just be ourselves it, it is probably the best way to get mental health uh, addressed, right. Is just that, that authentic. And you're, you know, you're a right, college athlete, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so same thing, right. You're, you're having to perform at one of the highest levels and you have coaches down your throat with expectations. This was the same with me as a college athlete. It, it was like, man, do, do you get, I wouldn't say brainwashed, but you get kind of trained into this mindset of perfectionism because that's what the coaches are expecting. They, they need you to show up at your best all right. the time. Uh, right. Even at practice, it doesn't matter. You're showing up. And so I think that takes a toll on us, right? Um, as athletes, where we start to feel like, man, I, 
that if I do it here, I got to do this in every part of my life. Um, and that I think can be detrimental to a degree. Yeah, I agree, man. And I actually, I, I, I coach football now. And so (laughs) to have the balance of like, I'm going to yell at you. I'm going to do everything a coach does, but at the same time, thinking about mental health and how this is maybe impacting you for the rest of your life and how I want to talk to you as a high school student coaching you right now. I, it messes with me, man. You yeah. Know, like, I, so, yeah. I love that you brought this up. I have to bring this up. This is, this is good. So I actually was working with a client uh, athlete. He's only 12 and he plays baseball and, the, and I, he went to a tournament and he came back and, I was asking his mom, I said, you know, how was the tournament, blah, blah, blah. She said, oh, they took second. I thought they did great. I'm like, cool. Um, Second place is good. They actually have shown statistics where second place is the least happiest between one, two, and three, or first, second, and third. Because first knows they won, so they're the happiest. Third is, like, happy to be on the, you know on the podium at all and then seconds like i was this close to winning and they're like the most depressed but in any case uh she was happy with the results but she said the coach just like tore into them because they took second at this tournament and she said you know i was really upset my the coach was yelling at them and calling them pussies and all these different things and i thought man like i i you know i was an athlete in college d1 school i ran track um I played golf too. So my sports were very independent based. It was like, what can I perform at the highest level? Mostly by myself. Now we did have teams for relays and stuff that I ran in, but um, we didn't have that kind of coach where they were yelling and calling us things. Um, College level was very serious, right? We got called into the office. We had a guy get threatened to get kicked off the team. If he didn't lose like I think it was like eight pounds. He had to lose eight pounds in a certain number of weeks or they were just going to drop him. Yeah. Um, so there was some stipulations that were pretty like just crazy. Um, but uh, tell me a little bit because you're a coach and you deal with mental health. This is so interesting. Um, what have you found just looking at other coaches and going, going through this process? Cause you played football, right? In college. So right. I mean, this seems to be one of the most, harshest environments i would think in sports is is football being these coaches just screaming and yelling all sorts of things but i just felt bad for this 12 year old because i thought man that kid's gonna grow up thinking that's the way he needs to talk to himself and you know i've done like i do i have my own life coach through uh tony robbins and so i i you know one of the sessions that i was in um my my life coach was literally like rustin change your language and you'll change your life. And he was referring to the language I used with myself, just in my own head. He's like, if you can change your language, you're going to change everything. And that stuck with me for uh, ever since he said it years ago. And it was, it was so helpful because I thought, man, and I started to address how I talk to myself, but even some of the coaches I in golf and things like that, they, they were hard on me. Um, my father being one of them. And, and so, yeah, I, I noticed my self-talk was through coaches and different people I've, I've gone through life with. So do you mind speaking on that? Yeah, man. I mean, uh, there was a lasting effect for me from sports. You know, um, you hold on to the things that you're not good at or not the areas you're not good enough in a lot longer than you hold on to the good stuff, right? You know, prime example from my own story, I, like, I'm only... 5'8", like I'm a short, I'm like average, but, you know, trying to play sports, I'm a shorter guy, short, and, you know, I was short and stocky, but I like always felt like, I was like, I got to work harder than everybody. I'm shorter than everybody, I'm smaller, I got to work harder. And so I always just worked my butt off, man. And I remember um, I had a basketball coach one time who, um, you know, I was working my butt off. I don't remember if I was conditioning or what, but he just goes, okay. Man, if you were only six inches taller, you'd be going, you'd be going D one, whatever. And I was like, oh yeah, funny coach. And dude, that I didn't realize it, but that lived with me for the next like decade. You know, like I, my wife is taller than I am. She is a D one athlete. She played volleyball in Alabama, World Tide, and uh, um, she's six foot, man. You know, and so when we were dating. 
Well, I actually went and dated her at first because she was taller than me, and then I thought I got over my pride, but I didn't actually address the issues. And I found myself, it sounds ridiculous now, but when we were engaged, like, I would, like, stand on a curb just to be like, and I would think this is how it's supposed to be, mm. right? And long story short, that's where a lot of my anxiety came from. I had to deal with a lot of my own insecurities and all that happened. A lot of that happened from, and I don't, I don't put the blame on like that coach or anybody. Like it's, sure. it's not like a, an anger thing, right? It, a lot of um, things like that happen out of, out of innocence. Sure. But all that to say, man, like I, I, I try and find a good balance of, you know, I don't, I really, if ever, like I don't cuss at the kids at, at the high schoolers. Some coaches do. That's to each their own. But I do yell at them. I do push them. But at the end of the day, um, I always reconvene with the ones that I pushed harder at right. the end of practice, and we 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 evaluate it. So, prime example, probably a couple weeks ago, um, we had one of our one of our best players was just dogging it, man. Every route he would run, he's just jogging. <laughs> I, I'm like, what are you doing, man? You're a leader on this team. You're an upperclassman. Like, what are you? And he's like, I'm tired, coach. And I'm like, then sit your butt down and I'm going to play somebody else, right? Yeah. At my coach moment. And then after practice, though, you know, I didn't go over to him and be like, you better figure it out tomorrow. Sure. I went over and I was like, what's going on, man? Yeah. Right? He's like, well, I'm, I'm playing basketball right now, too. And I was at basketball practice this morning, and then I lifted weights, and now I'm at football, and I'm just exhausted. I did basketball last night. I'm exhausted. And I was like, okay, so are you being the best leader you can be on this team by jogging out there? He's like, no. I was like, I don't mind giving you a break. And actually, you're better serving this team if you're sitting on the sideline helping the younger guys. Sure. And talking them up and coaching them up and leading them. And since that point, dude, he's been, I was like, I just need you to tell me, because if you don't, then it looks to me like you just don't care, right? right, right. So it's, it's, it's taking time, man. Like it's leadership is, and that's where coaching is, it's taking time to build character, right? Over winning a state championship, which ironically, by default, will, will lead to winning games. Oh, yeah, right? definitely. Like, yeah. Building character in that in those things will will lead to that, but I just don't think traditionally like we want to take the time. It's like my job is to win football games, not you know talk to this kid about life. And I just disagree so much. You know, I think that's a underlying part of the job is to just have that conversation, press into them as young men, not understanding how the world works yet, what's going on yet, and just having a conversation man you know like well that was a really long answer for your question but that's <laughs> just how what happened to me and how i'm kind of navigating it now yeah that's great have you seen uh have you seen the apple tv series ted lasso no but i've heard so much about it yeah you absolutely and then the listeners too if you haven't seen this series it literally is about mental health and coaching and it's phenomenal. I mean, just the, the level of addressing not the skill of the athlete, but the mental health side and that mindset process. Addressing that can make a team so much better, an athlete so much better than just trying to literally only focus on the skills and expect the player's mental health to just kind of rise up on its own. It's like, no, how do we address that first and then watch his performance like change? But I think that's a fascinating way to, to look at it because it's so true. I mean, the influence players have on each other, especially those high-end players, those key players, and then how you help them mentally just become strong. Man, it's almost like the skills start to, to take care of themselves for the most yeah. part. But, uh, but yeah, I think that's great. Um, so uh, real quick, so tell, um, if you don't mind, um, you've joined the Muscular Gentleman, which is so awesome. Um, do you mind telling a little bit about your experience so far? You're new to the program, but um, what have you experienced so far, and why did you decide to join? Yeah, man. Um, actually, let me let me tack one quick thing onto the coaching thing. Is that cool? Um, I, I do have one rule that I think is really important for anyone that is trying to coach or anything. I coach receivers, and you're not allowed to yell out like the obvious. Like this is like a mental health thing, right? So if a receiver catches the ball, our whole team knows. You cannot say, 
catch the ball. <laughs> it's like, oh, no crap, man. <laughs> like, be constructive with it, right? So anyway, I hate, like, the obvious, like, stuff like that. And I think yeah. that's that's important to your knowledge you were talking about. So, yeah, man, muscular gentleman. Um, dude, it's, it's been wild. Uh, it's been awesome. These workouts are kicking my butt. Um, <laughs> but it's been great. So experience all around, man. Um, yeah, it's... it's uh, I've talked to a couple people about it and I think some of my favorite things about it is how educational it is. Right. Like I, I'm cool with it. If you were just tell me what to eat every day and you just drew it up and like, that'd be great. But the fact like, it's actually more motivating to me to know why, like what is happening in my body when I'm carb cycling. Like the yeah. purpose behind me carb cycling makes so much sense that now I'm like, okay, well now I can't afford to not do it because mm-hmm. I understand the process of the process that's happening inside my body. Right. Um, so that's been a big thing for me, man, just like learning and learning why. Cause I think with a lot of nutrition, that's the problem, right? Like you have these diets, you have keto, you have this and this, I kind of explain it, but more so it's like, just eat this food group, just focus on these macros, right? And, uh, you know, that's what I've been stuck in the past. And I'm just like, oh, this, this makes sense, because I know what's going on in my body, right? Um, I love the community, I love just having that Facebook page, seeing guys get better and and seeing guys that's motivating, because I'm only in week one, you know, I'm coming up tomorrow is my one week mark. Nice. Um, and so it's 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 motivating to just see that, right? Um, and you were right. I got to get that meal planning down, man. I did good for the first four days, and then today I was like, I don't have any food ready. I got to go to a meeting. Like, But even down to that, like teaching how to do it has been awesome, man. So I've loved it, man. I'm And uh, I'm trying not to focus on the scale too much, but I'm down four pounds right now. So Again, yeah. perfect. Nice. Yeah, so. Good start. Yeah, man. So, I, I mean, I've loved it, man. I've been raving about it to everybody, and I'm not just saying that because I'm on your podcast. Uh, <laughs> it's it's been it's been a, a really big uh, perspective shift for me, which has been great on that on that mental side. So, yeah, that's awesome. Well, I'm glad you like it. Um, so, uh, we got a little bit of time. Why don't you? Why don't we just jump here to? Back to the mental health thing, because I think this is this is really such a fascinating topic for me and just all the listeners, because um, you were saying, you know, mental health isn't just meaning that you have an illness. Right. Um, But you even used uh, just a little bit ago, you said stress, you know, as simple as the word stress being being something that needs to be addressed, because for us men, I think, like I said before, we can bottle this up. uh, It can kind of come out and explode on us and, and we don't even realize how much we're taking on, I think, whether it's stress or anxiety, things like that. But what are some things that you guys teach for men that um, are trying to improve their mental health and ways that they can kind of address that? Yeah. I mean, biggest thing is just be proactive, man. Like our, our biggest message, it's not about if it's about when, and you know, um, you know, I think you use a similar analogy when talking about stuff in muscular gentlemen, but like you shouldn't wait till you have a heart attack to eat better, right? <laughs> right. Eat better now and, and, and live healthy and, and live almost preventative, right? Mm-hmm. And so we have to implement things and be proactive with our mental health. It, it, there is, we have to regularly work out our mind. You know, I, for me, it's reading, man. Like I don't read a lot, but I read like a chapter at a time of something that I find interesting. You know, yeah. it takes like 10, 15 minutes a day. Like it's not that much, right? Um, I like writing. I like journaling. You know, it helps me process my thoughts a little bit more. You know, sometimes like playing video games is good for my mental health. You know, like to sit there and do nothing, play some video games is good. I don't do it often, but sometimes I'm just beat and that's what I need, you know? Out. And so, yeah, so we just encourage guys, man, like to be proactive, to view this as the same type of health that you view your physical health, that you view your um, your your diet, right? I know that falls into physical, but like working out and, and diet and 
it because health also is holistic right like when you work out and you eat better you feel better like i'm yeah. feeling the benefits of that already a week into this and the same thing with it also helps your mind and then vice versa helps your emotions right so that's the big thing we try and teach guys is is to be proactive and you have to find what it is for you so we try to avoid like you know go do this or go do this it might not work for a guy right so maybe it's hiking being in nature um hanging out with friends is a big one we try and get guys to do i have fire pits at my house all the time with dudes okay we just hang out have cigars sit around a fire pit we all need that for our mental health you know but have guys to go to because you kind of touched on it earlier but like my wife doesn't need to hear me unload about everything and she also isn't going to understand everything the way, that, the way that a man would, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's nothing wrong with me going to them and just voicing my frustrations about work and other things in life that are going on because they have that level of, of understanding that. So anyway, that, that's just kind of the really big message we have is like be proactive about it. Seek out community. We're providing the community for you. So just show up. That's, bring a cigar and show up. That's all you got to do, you know? Yeah. Um, just show up and be there, man. And And... Be proactive because, again, it's not about if, it's about when. Um, and that's, I think that is true across the board. Yeah, I, I, I like that. And two, you know, it's almost like saying, listen, um, this isn't saying when you're, you have like a mental breakdown or you all of a sudden have a mental illness, right? This is saying, hey, like once you're going to get stressed, you're going to have anxiety, you're going to have something come up, Um because that's how life works. And one, you're being proactive. Two, um, you're doing the things to put in place to minimize it, right? Or at least keep it to a level where you have a game plan of some kind. Um, like you said, go hiking or do whatever. I mean, my wife knows if, if it's day three and I haven't worked out, like I'm going into mental illness. <laughs> I, I need those workouts because it just feeds me in all the right ways. Um, it's, it's my outlet. You know, I've got, I've got three little kids, um, multiple businesses. And so the stress that I carry from day to day, I have to use those workouts to my advantage. Um, it's just one of the ways that I, I handle it. But uh, yeah, she, she knows it's like, Hey, go get a workout in, you know, I'll see you in 45 minutes or whatever. Um, that's all I need. But, but I know what I need. And I think that's important too, for men listening is figure out what your needs are right. um, to help you stay on top of, of this kind of, uh, you know, mental health, um, so to speak. So, and yeah, that's great. I love that. Um, so tell, um, tell men where they can find you. Um, and, and a little bit like, uh, is there a website? Um, where can they find you personally, uh, and how they can reach out to you? Yeah, definitely. So, um, nice thing about us being under the umbrella, we kind of kept everything condensed under the same thing. So it's all in, all in the same place. It's our website is this is inherent.com. Um, that's how you spell inherent. It's backwards. I in this R E N T inherent. Yes. Perfect. Inherent. Um, so this is inherent.com. Social media is the same. It's at this is inherent. Um, and then you'll find us there. Uh, me personally is, uh, my social media is just my name. Um, so Andrew Perquette. My email is just my name, Andrew, at thisisinherent.com. So can you, follow, you can email me. You can just message me on, on social media. Um, I'm pretty easy to get a hold of. So um, love having conversations. So, yeah, I mean, feel free to just reach out. Awesome. That's fantastic. So I always like to do this uh, as kind of the Muscular Gym Podcast. Is there any last words of advice or anything you'd want to that make sure the audience leaves with uh, from today? The only thing is, man, is I, I got to give a shout out to all the men in our community because we can have a great idea, but if if they don't, if men don't accept the challenge and do it, then it doesn't work. And so, just shout out to the guys who are putting in the work and and making it happen because we're seeing success and probably the same with the muscular gentlemen. And the only other thing is. If you're a dude and you're not signed up for Muscular Gentleman, uh, do it. <laughs> so, I'm a good here, man. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, no, for real. You're, you know, it's it's so true. We're all like one decision away. You know, if you're not already doing something, you're one decision away from just getting on track 
to just leveling up your life, um, mental health included, right? So uh, yeah. awesome. Thank you. Well, I'm glad. I really appreciate you providing something like this for men. It, there's not enough opportunity out there. So um, I'm sure, you know, um, there are already guys listening in other cities going, where's my huddle, you know? So uh, I appreciate you doing this. I think it's fantastic. Um, and addressing this is a massive, um, of, of a massive importance, right? For across the board, men in general, just finding that mental health and what that looks like. But thanks for coming on the show. I appreciate you also explaining that distinct difference between illness and health, like such a powerful message, I think for men to, to hear and understand. Um, but, uh, yeah, I will, uh, I'll see you in the muscular gentleman, my man. And, uh, thanks for being on the show. Thanks man. Appreciate it. You've been listening to the muscular gentleman. Finally, a podcast that's unapologetic for being a man. Thanks for joining us this week. Make sure you visit the website, www.themusculargentleman.com. You can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, or via RSS, so you'll never miss a show. While you're at it, if you like the show, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes. Or just tell a buddy about the show. That would help, too. Don't forget, Rustin is available for private coaching. Embrace your masculinity and live the life you've always wanted. See you next time on The Muscular Gentleman. <laughs>